Okay, so we're going to start. Oh, excuse me a moment. I'll get rid of this. It's better. Just standing, feet hip width apart, toes pointing forward. So been used to the stance, just a comfortable stance. Weight a little bit forward, hips dropping back. Nothing very dramatic in terms of knees bending, or anything, just a, 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 a gentle dropping down. And before we start to move, let's try this as a little exercise in awareness, really. Place, place your hands on your belly, just slightly below your navel, slightly below your navel, so almost touching your, your navel. It doesn't matter which hand is on the inside. Very gently press in and just make a little circle. I'm going to come closer so you can see what I'm doing. Make a little circle here. This is... There are various reasons why people do these this particular type of exercise, but I'm just doing it to draw your attention to this part of the body that is currently being moved by your hands. Not even going to do in one direction. Do a roughly equal number in the other direction. Don't do too many of these. And then just let your hands rest and begin to turn in the middle of your body so that you're turning in your hips. That's where you, you want the point of focus. So your point of focus still very much in the area from behind and slightly below your hands. This is the movement that we're going to be doing. The, the source of the movement, shall we say. So just let your hands drop down and then gradually pick up the pace of the turn in in that same area of the body. And that process of drawing your awareness to this part of the body is one that you can do at any point once you once you become familiar with it. So hips to, hips to waist is the area that you want to be thinking of here. Arms feeling slightly heavy, just hanging from your shoulders. And you'll find that they fall quite naturally. See my front hand as it comes around, either, and of course, roughly where liver is on one side, spleen on the other side. And behind, they will fall just at the, the base of the spine, slightly below the small of the back. And it's quite a, a strong movement. Your arms swing, swinging around. The sort of feeling that you might get if, if, if you were to sort of bang on a drum or something like that, you get a little bit of a a vibration coming through. And when, when your hand falls in, in, in your back here, slightly above that area, in the small of your back, there's a, an acupuncture point called Ming Men. This is the, the gate of life. Some people like to do this. They just raise the hand slightly. But I think if you've got the correct swing here and you get that vibration what you're doing is you're gently stimulating the energy in your spine and so either way we can just refer to this exercise as knocking at the gate of life which i think is a wonderful name personally So this is a, a good exercise to prepare with well, it's a common exercise in Tai Chi and Qigong. Very gently aerobic. You're not going mad here, but you, know, you, you can reasonably expect your um, heartbeat to, to rise a little.
take a couple of slow, gentle breaths. Just notice the, the sharpness, the freshness of, of your in breath. And then I need to stand back a bit. Raise your arms a little bit, hands palm up. Hands should be no higher than your shoulders, but your elbows are always lower. So if your hands are down here, your elbows will be hanging down. But just aware again of the weight of your arms on your shoulders. And then just let your hands drop down. So this center part of your body feels as though it's dropping down to the ground some, somehow. It's, it's, a, it's, it's what, one of the key reasons why we have the, the hip width stance to create space for that sense of dropping. You might imagine your pelvis or perhaps your torso sliding down between your legs, for instance. I sometimes have this image of my pelvis hanging from the base, from the tail of my spine, like a, you can imagine a, a, a bucket hanging from a rope in, in, in a bell. And just allowing your body to yield a little bit to, to that movement by softening your knees until you feel this, this, this springy resistance starts to, to, to build in your, your, your legs. So you're kind of held between the downward movement and the upward movement. And then letting your hips drop back a little bit more, loading the legs until they push you up quite strongly. Come to that top position again, not here, but here, and sink down. Nice and easy and gently pushing up, your body expanding and contracting. Expanding. And contract. Bring your hands around, turn your cradle in the ball, and then just pushing up. Using the expansion to lift the ball and the contraction to give you that feeling of pressing the ball down. So the, the idea of using an image like a ball, imagine it's quite a heavy ball, so that you're encouraged to use your legs to push up rather than your arms and for your weight dropping down to get that feeling of pressing down. If you look at my hands closely, you'll see the, the range of movement, independent movement in, in, in my hands is roughly about my navel, my belly, to about the, the top of the ribs. I'm, I'm not suggesting, but, but don't, don't, don't do this. You can see my shoulders have come up when, when, when I do that. And don't just move your arms. Try and get this lovely feeling that, we, that comes from these arts of your whole body moving as one unit. Another way you can think of this is that your fingers are stuck together. I'll just place mine lightly together. And what happens is the expansion in your body pushes your elbows out. I'm exaggerating this a little bit. And then as they contract, they, they, they come in. And it, you wouldn't be able to push your elbows out without your hand, your, your fingers coming up if they really were stuck together. Normally they're a little bit separate in this exercise.
and then with the same qualities the wild goose so here's this image of the bird in flight if that's helpful the way that we use images in these arts at this point in any case isn't to try and take our attention somewhere else or to pretend that we're somewhere else but rather to bring those qualities that the image might evoke if they do if they don't then it's not an issue into the movement that you're doing right here and now so this is not a process like some other forms of visualization where you're going on a journey or you're going somewhere else there can be good reason for doing that but it's not what we're doing here And then your hands drop down, cross in front of your belly, and pushing up. One of the consequences, one of the outcomes of the postures that we take, this dropping of our center of gravity, the release of tightness in the upper part of our body, is to allow sense of space to develop within the body and all the movement that we do takes place within that space filling it but not straining against the, the, the boundaries of it certainly eroding those boundaries so your range of movement gradually increases but not by straining and not by stretching One more time. <clears throat> Moving as far as you're comfortable, let your hands drop down. And this time, as you push up, again, your elbow begins to push away, but this time, drawing your fingers up, your elbow drops, wrap your fingers around and pull down. And then on the other side, pushing up. See how it feels comparing each side, because there's often a difference between one side and another. When you wrap your fingers around, don't wrap around tightly. Imagine you're wrapping your fingers around a soft fruit, like a sort of a berry or something like that. You don't want to squeeze hard. It's a, a firm grip, but with a with a feeling of a hollow within your hand. So we don't want our shoulders to stiffen up. So again, we're still using that up and down movement in the body. One more time. Once again, bring your hands to the center of your body, but this time to the sides of your center, and then let them come around in front and push up. Feel the expansion 
from that middle part of your body and then back contracting in was like a, a ball or a balloon expanding. This time with the next expansion, push out and turn just a little bit and back. Turn the other way. And back. And then press out sideways. And again. We're pushing in four directions. First of all, upwards. The middle two directions are largely determined by what's happening here in that center part of your body. You're turning one direction, your hands push out sideways. In fact, all three of these final movements uh, is the same movement with your arms and your hands. You turn the other way and then facing forwards and push out. One more round. Your hands drop down and then circling around. Here, the expansion pushes your arm out to the sides. And then, if it's comfortable for you from here, just 
at a little turn, you find that that strain in you, in your shoulder or your hip or in between, then just leave the, leave the turn out, stay with the original exercise. And then change sides. And then, again, if it's comfortable, add in the turn. Now, once again, just bring your hands to, to, to your belly. Very gentle pressure in and just do a few circles in one direction again. And then back in the other. You're really just trying to get a feel for a sense of movement in that center part of the body. What we've been doing in the last couple of exercises is turning here. I'm exaggerating this, so my knees are going a bit out of the line, but this horizontal rotation in the, the center. The next two exercises, it's going to be this. The rotation is going to be vertical. In fact, this, the, the second of these two exercises will use both. But this is the movement. You see how my hips go back. So be very careful with this. Just sinking down, push your hips back. And just see how that affects your shoulders and your head. Then sinking down a little bit again, careful with your knees, let the hips drop down and then push up. You don't have to do this as a big movement. I'm just doing it quite big so you can see what's going on. Careful with your back and push up. And then using this movement, your arms beginning to follow. So you're rowing a boat in the middle of the lake. One more time. And then the second of these tilting exercises is polishing the table. Turn first horizontally, then push the hips back for the vertical rotation. Turn horizontally and then let the hips drop down. Go in the other direction, turn and tilt, you could say. And then turn and tilt back.
One more time. Good, and then stand again. Just get a sense with a standing posture. Shoulders relating to your hips, arms hanging down from the side. You can see my knees moving towards a point where they're going to be above the balls of my feet, whereas my hips are going back more to a point above, above ankles. And crucially, this section of the body you know, where, where a lot of your weight accumulates is dropping down into the ground. So thick in the upper body, this growing sense of, of, of space. And mostly when, when we turn, we're thinking of keeping this very strict relationship between shoulders and, and hips. We wouldn't want to do that or that or that. There's a few, I mean, there are, there are exceptions. This next exercise is actually going to be one of those exceptions where there's just, there's going to be just a little bit more movement, but it comes from the hips. So first of all, just moving your weight from side to side a little bit. And as you do, as you go into one foot, just turn slightly in the other direction. Go across, turn slightly in the other direction. Don't go too far because you'll put your knees out of line. But do you can you can sort of neutralize that effect by sinking down just a little bit in your knees. Again, be careful in your hips, your knees. So your hips dropping down. So now you come up a little bit in between. This is also unusual, and you drop down. You come up, and you drop down. Now bring your hands on onto your hips, and roughly speaking, there's a circular movement with your hands and. Your hands are working opposite each other, like if you were riding a bike, you would, you, you would have your feet on the pedals. As one foot went up, the other one would go down. As one went back, the other one would go forwards. But it's very much a movement in the centre part of the body. Let your elbows begin to move as well. So here, again, I'm exaggerating. There's a, a lengthening through that spine, and that engages your shoulder. And then just let, let your hand release from your hip, pressing forwards. So this is the exercise bare play. I, I, I like this exercise because it does give a little bit more freedom of movement in sides and back with this rolling of hips and shoulders, which with quite, quite a lot of the exercises we do we don't want hips and shoulders to move quite this far, but we do want to get that feeling of the movement within our body. The image of the bear is also very attractive. This idea of a quite a strong movement, but also with a quality of, of softness. Now, bears have this strange image, don't they? The, um, they would think about teddy bears and yogi bear and so on and so forth. And they're, they're, they're almost cuddly, aren't they? Except, I mean, I'm not sure that's, that's, that's a true perception, but it's nevertheless a perception we have. So it has this quality of both strength, but also a softness about it, or suppleness, perhaps, is a better term. So this is the exercise bare play. And just pay attention to the feeling of movement in your back and spine and your sides ribs. These are qualities that you, that you want to feel in all of the exercises, that there is movement within the body. But it, a lot of that movement in many of the exercises will happen within a, a, an outer covering where the movement really is quite economic.
Your arms will move by a combination of your weight moving from foot to foot and that center part of your body turning. Those, those are always going to be the sources for any sense of movement in, in your arms. Your arms will express what's happening in those areas. One more on each side. Now, just take a slightly wider stance. This should give you more space for, for that feeling of your, your, your center dropping and moving the weight from side to side. One of the ways that we build our awareness of those internal movements that I was referring to in the last exercise is by imagining that we're moving through water. Water offers a, a degree of resistance to our movements, not, not so much that we have to stiffen up and, and, and tighten up, but enough so that the natural response of our body is, is to connect more. And it can be very easy with, with an arts like Tai Chi and Qigong to just follow our arms. And that's often the way that we learn, of course, because the arms are the first thing that we see. But we're, we're wanting to, to, to build a sense of our whole body moving. And that has a very distinctive feel to it. Now this time, when you go into your left foot, so mirror my movement, just turn your body a little bit to the left. Go into your right foot and turn to your right. If you hold your hands in front of you, again in front of your belly, again you can imagine cradling the ball. Actually, you'll see that there's quite a significant movement in your arms and your hands. Now, as with bare play, feeling that when your hips move, there's a, a line of movement that moves to your shoulders. Next time you go in, in your left, you move across, you turn, and that turn in your hip is echoed by a turn in your shoulder. Bring your hand, your weight back, turn, draw your hand across, hold a ball between your hands. Move across and turn again. And then this time, as you go into your right, it's your, your body turns to the right, your right shoulder rotates. The top hand, your left hand, will press down until it's in front of the left hip. This is part in the wild horse's mane. You come back and turn. So the combination, moving into your right and turn into your right, the combination of weight movement, and turning in the center of your body builds into a movement in your shoulder and that will move your arm for you. So by the time the movement, the energy has reached your arm, there's very little for your arm to do apart from to, in a sense, offer a shape. It's like if you're going to to water your garden with, with a hose pipe. You put the one end of the hose pipe on a tap, you make sure it's secure, you turn the water on, and then you go to the other end. And all you have to do, you don't have to pump the water through the, through the hose pipe. You just aim it. And so in that sense, you're, you're using your arms to aim the movement.
So you need to move in your legs, you need to move your weight, you need to turn your center. Otherwise, there's nothing for you to aim. It'd be like somebody's turned the tap on. So part in the wild horse is made. Your top hand going down and your bottom hand swinging out creates an opening for your chest. And that then contracts as you come across. And you may just pick up a, a similar opening in your upper back. One more time. Shake out. Maintaining the, the width of your step, from left to right, turn your right your left foot out, I beg your pardon, step straight forward with, with your, your right. See, you can see the gap across my legs, between my feet. It's not that, because that is a bit like standing on a pole or standing on a log or a tightrope or something like that. And then just moving your weight from front to back. So it's a slightly diagonal line. When you go forwards, you get into about 60% of your weight in the front, 40 in the back. When you go back, more like 70 in the back, 30 in the front. Going back to this awareness of this area here, when this area to drop to the ground. One way of thinking of this exercise, it's quite interesting to do this, is to imagine that you're sitting on a ball, like these big blue balls you get in gyms. So I tried this a few, few months back. It, it does work, but it's a bit low. Uh, but, but nevertheless, it's, it's worth having a go. And all that's happening is you're sitting on the ball, you push with the back foot, say, and the ball rolls forwards and carries you with it. And then you go back. The so same thing. So this, this is an image, is, is, is a useful one because it, it connects up what's happening in the center of the body, what's happening in our feet and our legs. You can just raise your toes and your heel a little bit. You can turn the front foot out. So when your heel comes up or when your toes come up, more of your weight goes in to the supporting leg. Now, make sure that you remain upright. There's often a temptation to do something like this. You can say I'm leaning now. That means my center of gravity is going forwards. Or I leave when I go, now my center of gravity is going back and it's going to pull me over. So you're able to get more of your weight into and flowing down through that leg and that foot. So the alignment of your, of your body that we looked at right at the start, you know, shoulders in line with hips and so on, is actually really important here. If I get to here, and if you look at, if you look at the center of my body, if I do this, I disappear off screen. It doesn't take much to throw the body offline, certainly if we're trying to keep that soft feeling in the body. And then stepping in. So, Aligning our body with the pull of gravity. Allowing our center of gravity to sink. Learning to move 
with those qualities means that we end up maintaining what I would think of as stability, not balance, and shake out. If I were to balance, or rather, let's put it the other way around, if I'm here and I'm stable, I'm fine. I can do all sorts of things. I can put my arm out there, there. I can put a leg out there. If this was balancing, as soon as I put my leg out there, I'd have to put an arm out, because otherwise my leg's going to pull me over. What may happen is I go slightly out of line. Now I'm having to balance. You see my arms, my legs going all over the place. And so what I want to do is to come back to stability, which is to do with the alignment and the sinking of our centre of gravity. So now, from the hip width stance, turn your right foot out, step forwards with, with your left, and transferring your weight forwards and backwards. In fact, we're not trying to balance in Tai Chi. We're trying to remain stable. If you're stable, you don't need to balance. Balance has different connotations in, 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 in Tai Chi to do with the balance in the quality of the movement between mind and body and so on and so forth. So it's a bit confusing if you think of balance. And this is quite useful because actually if we can redefine what we mean, then we, it gives us a, a different view, a different perspective on issues. So if you're somebody who is struggling to to maintain stability, or you may, may maybe have a tendency to fall, or as a concern of yours, it's a legitimate concern, of course, then actually, rather than thinking, how do I balance better? Try thinking, how do I become more stable? And then raising your toes and your heels. And again, stepping in, your legs should feel quite heavy as it hangs from your, from your hip. And step back. Place the foot down in the position that you've got it from. So your foot sort of swings in in a curve and swings out. And then step through, and either forwards or backwards, maintaining the width of your step. And when you put the foot down, the term we often use is that we plant the foot. So when you plant something, you don't just go outside and you know, chuck a few bulbs or seeds around. You actually think about where you want the, the, the plant to grow, dig a hole, you make sure that everything's right, as you put the seed in. Change direction. So this issue of stability means that we're free to move our leg and our foot without having to compensate for the change. And bring your feet parallel. Excellent. Okay. Now, have your left foot forwards. So this time, arms just hanging down by your sides. Again, your arms are quite heavy. What you can do is you push your weight forwards, but because you're in water, using that image again. Your hands are slightly held back. If I was in water, the arms would tend to trail behind me. 
I go forward and then just feel my arms following on and back. We get this lovely wave like movement working through our body. Sense of the, the, the momentum, the flow, the energy of the movement coming from the ground. And if you were in water, your fingers wouldn't be tight. They'll be a tend to soften. So you can see, <clears throat> and, my, and my fingers you know, follow. So my shoulder comes forward. My elbow follows my shoulder. My wrist follows my elbow. My fingers follow my wrist. You're facing forwards, so your center's facing the head. You're moving forwards and backwards, and so your, your arms are swinging forwards and backwards. Now, settle into your back foot, and this time turn towards your front foot. Feel how that redirects your arms. They're still swinging. And just gradually swing a little bit more. Feel the movement, the expansion and the contraction within your body. This is wind blows the willows. Front foot, move your weight, settle in, turn. Your weight's in your back foot. So you turn on your back foot, move your weight, you turn on the front foot, or the front leg if you prefer. Okay, and bring your feet parallel. <clears throat> so when we face forwards, our arms will tend to move in that direction. When we face to one side, you can see when I turn the body here, just as when we did this or this, then and unless I try to do something different with, with, with my arms, and if we did that, we would always have the proviso that we would never want to stiffen up. Then our arms are just going to naturally follow the, the, the movement. And this is perfectly natural for, for us. If you're over here, so if I'm here, if I'm standing in, say, a supermarket aisle and, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the stuff on the aisle and I think, well, I'm going to have a look, at, a look over there. I don't turn around and think, oh, I forgot my hands. I need to go and get my hands back. My hands just turn with me. This is, this is you, you, you would have to put a lot of effort into doing this if, 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 if you see what I mean. So um, 
the, 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 the movements follow the natural patterns, if you like, of movement within, within the body. So left foot forwards, hip width across your feet, and fisherman cast the net. Tai Chi very much works with the natural structures, natural patterns of movement in our body. We work to enhance them, to build them, of course. So sit back and turn, wind blows the willows, hips still dropping down, center of gravity is still dropping down. Don't stiffen up, don't strain in your chest or your back or your arms or shoulders. Use the momentum, the energy that builds from the movement of your weight. Direct. Shape that movement through the center of your body. So focus your intent, your idea, if you like, about the movement through the center of your, your body. Just see how your arms follow the movement. And then this time, I'm going to go forward, but depends where you've got the room. When you're going forward, you turn the, the front foot out a little bit, sink down, raise the back heel, bring the back foot in. Now, you can either just put it down here, or if you wish, you can raise the foot a little bit, put the foot down, remember, plant the foot, go forwards, turn, bring that foot, through, almost like you're kicking a ball up in the air. This is dragonfly skims the water. And then step back. One more time. And bring your feet out. Check it out. Good. Now rub your hands together. Tapping gently over your face. Over your head and neck. one shoulder, just to get that sense of vibration again in, in your muscles, your soft tissue, and down your arm and up the outside. But again, as though you were just tapping on a drum. The other side. And your back.
نمیدونم جا هی Coming back to this basic standing position, let your hips sink down and then pushing up and as you push up, similar to the wild goose, your arms come up. Just notice there comes a point where it's like it's hard work. Gravity is pulling down. You're losing the momentum of the push up. So you start to yield to the pull of gravity. Feel your hips dropping back, drawing your hands in, and then down. Pushing up, starting to feel the pull on your hips, becoming stronger until. It's just easier to let them begin to yield. Embrace tiger, return to mountain. Yielding is not simply giving way. The very act of yielding loads your legs. You get that stronger feeling in, in, in your legs. So in order to get the push up, we have to yield. It's like being on the trampoline, dropping down on the trampoline in the first instance before you can feel the push up. And then let your hands drop down. Stand for a moment and take a couple of slow, gentle breaths to finish. shake out. Thank you very much everybody.